guys, it's Janine here. How are you all? I hope you're all doing well. Now in this episode, as promised last episode, I'm going to show you how I made this gorgeous little pixie cake topper with a light up butterfly lamp. And that's going to be perfect for sitting atop the cake that I made in my last episode. There's loads to get done in this demo, which is something I generally do. So let's just get on with it. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me again for another episode of That's Cakeable on Cakeflix TV. Um, this episode is actually part two of our pixie fairy uh, woodland cake tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make the cute little pixie baby topper in a nest with a butterfly lantern. So what I'm going to start with are things that we have to prepare ahead of time that need to set in order to put this together. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to prepare the pixie's wings. So what I have here is um, just gelatin powder. Now, with a bit of coconut in it because that's just going to be everywhere. Um, it is about a tablespoon of gelatin powder. And to that I am eyeballing it, I will admit. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Give that a little bit of a swoosh and set that aside for a second to bloom. I may add just a tad more water. There we go, that looks better. Now that's sort of the consistency you want. So that needs to be set aside to bloom. Right, so once that's had some time to bloom, we now have to pop it in the microwave. I just chuck it in for a 30 second burst. We don't want it to boil, but we do want it to melt. So I'll get onto that now. Okay, so we've got the gelatin all melted down. I know initially I said 30 second burst. Your first burst, 30 seconds. After that, about 10 second bursts until it's around about like that. So it is quite thick, you can see it's quite thick. Now to that I'm adding some Rolcom Crystal Illusion Dust. I love this stuff, it is always in my arsenal. And give that a good sprinkle in there. Put that aside and mix that up. Look at that, I don't know if that's in catching that sparkle. You see that sparkle? It's there, I promise. Now, what I did was I took a piece of cardboard and I covered it in some um, sticky tape. And then what I did was drew on some wings, two sizes, to use as templates. But what I ended up finding was that it's just as easy to make it into a gelatin sheet and cut out the wings later. So that's what I'm doing. So I've just covered this in some uh, plastic wrap as well for a bit of extra assurance. If you get some lines and creases in it, it actually adds to the effect. It puts those lines and creases into your wings. So all I do then is pour on my gelatin. Look at the sparkle, it's so pretty. And run it around. Just like that. Now you can have it as thick or as thin as you want. I'm going to take a bit of excess off. It's a bit thick for me. And I would say safest bet would be to leave this for about 8 to 12 hours. And that is it. Set that aside to dry at room temperature. And what you end up with is something like this. Okay, and that's really easy to cut your wings from. So I'll show you how I do that very simply. You still have to be a little bit gentle because it's quite brittle. But... Basically, use my scissors and very gently cut out my little wings, just like that. You can probably barely see that, but it's there, I promise. So that's the first part you have to do because it has to dry in advance. I'll tidy this up and then we'll move on to the next part that we have to do in advance. So now we have to make the little nest for our little pixie to sleep in. So to do that, once again, it's back to the microwave. I've got some chocolate chips here, which some of this 
extra ingredient has gotten into. Some chocolate chips here and I'm just going to nuke them in the microwave until they're melted. Okay, I have now melted my chocolate chips. Now they're not melted 100% perfectly, but in this case, it's not really gonna matter. So I have my chocolate. The next thing I have to do is add one of these beauties. It is a shredded wheat biscuit that's as messy as anything. So I'm going to take that out. Try not to make too much mess, but that's like my middle name, so that's a very silly expectation. And crush that into the melted chocolate. Crush it quite well. You don't want like big chunks in there, like I'm dropping in there. There we go. Any of the big chunks, I'm just going to pop out and either re-crush or chuck in the bin. So that's that technical part done. And then we're just gonna mix it up. And this is going to make the base for our little nest. Just like that. Done. Right, now what I have is a little glass bowl and I'm just making it relative to the size of the cake, even though this one is actually quite a bit larger than um, I should have really put on the top of this cake. But anywho, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So it's just a little glass bowl and I'm gonna line that with some plastic wrap. like that. You want to make sure that you've got quite a bit of excess over here because sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain to get out and having that extra pulling action makes life a lot easier. And then just pop our shredded wheat mixture straight into that bowl. Now just mold it around the size Sides, not size, well the size as well, but the sides of the bowl to make a nest shape. The great thing because it's a nest, and once again that word that I used in the last episode about six billion times, it's organic. The edges don't all have to be nice and perfect. As a matter of fact, it looks better if they are not. And that is pretty much it. Just making sure that there's plenty of room in the bottom there for our baby to sit in. Then that little beauty also gets popped aside. You can pop it in the fridge to chill it up a lot faster if you wish. And that's the nest. Okay. So that's another thing that has to be done ahead of time, of course, because it has to set. Now, one more thing I like to do ahead of time. This is not imperative that you do this ahead of time. I just like to do it. But that is the um, butterfly canopy for our little lantern on top of the cake. So what I have here is some wafer paper and I've printed out with edible ink some images of monarch butterfly wings. So I'm going to go ahead and Cut them out. Okay, so now they're cut out. That was probably a little bit of overkill with how many I had printed, but better to be safe than sorry. So what I'm going to do now is put them all out on my mat. And I'm going to use this amazing product that was sent to me by the beautiful Monica of Moorish Cakes um, that you can get from her website and it's in retail stores now. So it's a beautiful wafer paper moistening agent conditioner and it is absolutely beautiful. It moistens the wafer paper without making it fold up. So, and that's what I want. I need these to be pliable. So let's get spritzing. Oh, I love even the feeling of using it. Thank you, Monica, this is beautiful. 
you guys, if you use wafer paper, um, yeah, I could not recommend this more. This is amazing stuff. So we're just gonna let these sit just for a minute to let that moisturizer do its thing. And then I'm gonna turn them over and moisturize the back. All right, ready to spray the back. And that is all it takes, it's amazing. So I'm gonna pop these aside for a second. That dries so, so quickly, it's amazing, it's so good. It keeps it tacky enough to do what I wanna do next though. So what I have here is just a styrofoam dummy with a toothpick and a little styrofoam rose cone on top. Now what I'm going to do is take my first, is take my first, now very soft, can you see that? How good is that stuff? First moisturized uh, butterfly wing and just pop that around the top like that. I want it sort of to stay flared, so I'm just pinching it up on the top there. I'll do the same on the other side. And because these wings are now moisturized, they're going into a beautiful curve. Can you see that? It's a lifesaver, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Pinching it all onto the top there. Now I'm gonna go in with some of the sharper shaped wings and do the same thing. Don't worry if they're too long at the top, we can always clip that off. But as you can see, because I've used that beautiful moisturizer, it's just going onto itself and bending into the shape I want it to. I don't have to force it to do anything. It's just going. And there we go. Now I might see, that's why it was overkill, I might add a few more pieces to that. But that is how you do it. And then you just sit it on here this is just to mold it, so you just sit it on here to dry. And that's done. Now that it's been molded, I'm just pushing those wings under just a little bit. I want them a little bit flared out, but not crazy flared out. I want it to stay looking like butterfly wings. And there we have it. So now I'm just gonna Top, lock, lock that little bit off the top there, so it's not quite as pointed. And that gets set aside to dry. And that is our little light. So I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a break now before we head on to the next part. lovely to have you back. Okay, now we're on to probably the most challenging part of the entire cake, cake topper, everything included, and that is making our little pixie baby's face. Now, I'm no modeling expert when it comes to figurines, but I'm gonna give it the best shot I can and hopefully show you the way that I do things and you might just learn something from it. So let's get on with it. Okay, so like I said, I'm no expert at this. Um, I am just that cake artist that wings things. So what I've got here is some Saracino modeling paste and I'm just giving it a little condition. I've mixed it half and half with fondant. Um, I do that because I have hot hands and I find if I don't mix it with a bit of fondant, it gets a bit too sticky for me and that's why I keep my cornflour pouch with me also. So I'm rolling it into 
sort of a, hmm, I don't know. I don't even know what this shape is. What's this shape? That shape. <laughs> and this is just how I do it. Now what I'm using is a cell cake board. You could just use a cake board. You could use a chopping board, um, pretty much whatever you like. But this is just how I do it. And that's just a bit of an idea if you wanted to try it your own way. I flatten the sides down so it's attached to that board. Then with my finger, I round the top out. It's going to be the top of our head and attach that to the board. And on the bottom, a bit more of an angle and that's where the bottom of our head's going to be. Now it's a little bit long for a baby. And I just go ahead and do that until I'm pretty happy with the shape. Then I'm just going to flatten it down a little bit and perfect that shape. Happy with that? Okay, so now with the baby, um, it's better to make the eyes further than halfway down the face. As you can see, I can fuss with this forever. And I'm going to take just the handle of this ball tool and mark where I want the eyes basically to be. So further than halfway down, so I'm gonna go around about there. With my finger, I'm then going to soften that, soften that out and push it sort of out to the side a little. All of this pushing and pulling sort of ends up helping to define other parts of the face. We've got some great character modelers on Cake Flix TV. So just so you know, I am very amateur. This is not my usual thing but I will do my best for you. Okay, then with my pinky fingers, I'm just going to push in where I want the eyes to be and push them into the center to define sort of where a nose will be. At this point, it is very defined. But that's what we use our fingers for. I'm going to soften all of that out. Even the bridge of the nose, I want softened a little. Starting to take shape. Now with my Dresden tool, I'm going to push up under the nose area where I want the little nostrils to go, just like that. And I'm gonna flatten out underneath it a little bit also. Use my finger to do that as well. And then with my fingers, I'm just going to soften the edge of that little nose. Like that. And now I have another amazing tool from Moorish Cakes, the amazing moniker at Moorish Cakes. This is the more pointy tool. And I've never had anything like it before. And now that I have it, I will never be without it, I promise you. It is probably the ultimate multi-purpose tool. I'm going to use it in this case to make the little nostrils in the nose. So one in there and I'm pushing it out a little just to flare it and one there. Just like that. Now we'll be back to fiddle around with the nose later because it does end up getting a little squished and um, manipulated as I do other parts of the, the face. But that's a good start. Okay. I'm also going to use my more pointy tool that you can get from monicacavallaro.com, Cakers Warehouse. I'm sure I think Lollipop Cake Supplies have it all here in Oz. If you're looking overseas, probably best to contact Monica and she will put you onto it. I'm going to use my more pointy tool to make the mouth. So I'm making it probably only as wide, if, if not just slightly, slightly wider than the nose. So I've just marked that area out. Now with my scalpel or X-Acto or hobby knife, I'm just going to cut a line between those two guides. Pretty much like that. Okay. This is where it gets creepy guys. I'm going to now lift the top lip upwards by pushing the sugar paste in that hole. Same with the bottom lip, pull it downwards. And like I said, it's a bit creepy. Once it's that big, I like to take my Dresden tool because it's a bit softer and neater. And push that right up. Softening any of those edges. Same with the bottom. 
And don't worry about what the inside looks like, you're not going to see it. Okay? Now with my finger, I'm just going to push that little bit of sugar paste at the top upwards, and that's going to help me create a top lip. And as you can see, like I said, now our nose is well and truly squished, but that's okay, we'll come back to that. With my very small ball tool, the little ridge underneath the nose, I then mark in with that ball tool, and it starts making our top lip. I'm just running around the shape of the top lip, like that, and just pressing upwards to make the little lips. Okay, we will come back and perfect, so don't worry too much. For the bottom lip, I'm just going to make a little, what can I say, um, rectangle shape underneath, marked in very gently, that meets up with those bottom corners of that lip, just like that, okay? And that's pretty much it. Now we need to get this mouth together. So what I do, I take another ball tool, a medium sized ball tool, and start making little ridges down either side. Now this is going to define the chin from the cheeks. If you start moving around the shape of the lip and stuff, don't worry. So we're gonna come back in and perfect that shortly. Under the chin here. I'm gonna start pushing that under. And then with our fingers, you wanna come back in and start smoothing that out. Just like that. Where that line is, a little bit more prominent. And underneath here, I'm gonna start pushing in so that we've got a neck and using my fingers to smooth that area out. Now you want to push upwards also. Downwards, upwards, downwards. And you'll start seeing the definition happening between the chin and the cheeks. Now I want it quite, quite defined, but almost all together, if that makes sense. I don't know, it's just a, a baby face thing. Just like that. Fingers are brilliant tools, of course. By far the best for softening. Here we go. Opening that chin up. And that closes the mouth like I promised you it would. There we go. A little bit of a lopsided mouth now, that's okay, we can fix that up. And just pushing in around the sides there to get the shape that we want. Okay. Now as you can see, our little mouth's gone a bit lopsided which is actually fine because I like the bottom lip being further up underneath. So I'm pushing that bottom lip under, just there. And I'm going to define the top lip again a bit more. And I don't know if you've noticed, but babies tend to have a very sad look on their face when they're sleeping, when they're newborns. So I'm going to make that happen by just marking lines downwards like a sad face, just like that. I'm gonna push this out. Not quite defined enough for my liking. And then right underneath here, I'm gonna do a little upside down semicircle, just like that. Now I can start pushing that all back in together. I'm gonna to use my ball tool to help me with that. Just 
There we go, there's that pouty look. Now that I've pushed that upwards, just softening those ridges a little. We've got that nice, cute little pouty sleeping baby look. Okie doke. Now I'm going to move on to the eyes. So I've cheated a little bit because he's sleeping, so he doesn't really have eyes. Well, he does, but you know. So for the eyes, I'm using this tool. Now I don't know what it's called or where it's from, but it looks to me like you could get exactly the same effect by cutting a straw in half. I may be wrong, but I think you could. Failing that, you could just mark it in with a Dresden tool. See what I'm doing? Fussing. Like I said, I wouldn't. But what am I doing? Fussing. So I'm just going to get this. First of all, I'm just going to mark out that area for the eye a little more with a ball tool, where I want my eyes to be. This also defines the nose a little, if you can see that happening. Just like that. And then I'm just going to use this, the smaller one, I don't want huge eyes. Press it very gently into the paste. There we go. Now I want to create a bit of a ridge underneath. So I'm using my small ball tool and just going underneath that line on both sides. to create a little ridge underneath for the eyes. And then with the same ball tool again, a little ridge over the top. Which I will then soften out with a larger ball tool. Okay, and the last little bits that I want to add. Are, they tend to have little lines down here. Little creasy lines. I'm just going to put a little line down here, either side, which I will soften also. And little crinkly lines over the nose. up those little nostrils again. So just push them in a little bit on the sides now. And then go around and squish it until you're happy with your overall face shape. And you have your sleeping baby. That is pretty much, pretty much it guys. I'm going to define this a little bit more again. And there we go, I'll, I'll put you out of your misery and stop now. So that is how you get, well that's how I get my sleeping baby. Okay, baby's face is done. Now we've got to color this little cherub and I keep it really, really simple. So I'm just going to use a combination of sort of a tan color and a pink color and just go into a few little spots once I pick which brush I want. This looks good. So firstly, I'm just going to rosy up the little cheeks. I've got some cornflower here too to dull down the color because I really don't want it dark. And I'm gonna firstly just go in and very gently start blushing those cheeks. Same on the other side. Really easier for me to go upside down here. So I'm first starting with just like a little bit and building it up. A little bit more. Yep, 
ever so gentle. A little bit of color on the nose, so I'm using the same color, I just very gently, very gently tapping the nose. Chin, and forehead, which you won't see a lot of, but there we go. Okay, now I'm going to take some of that same pink and I'm going to keep it dry because I want it really light. And I'm going to use a small brush, mixing that pink with the cornflower and just very gently dust it onto our baby's lips. I might take some of that, I said that tanny neutral sort of colour and do the same thing. A little bit on the lips, ever so gently. I just don't want them to be too pink, like I don't want to look like it's wearing makeup. So I think that's, yes, that's plenty enough. And then with the same pink and tan, what I like to do is just go into those eye ridges and dust in there. Just gives it an ever so slight definition. Which I hope you can sort of see at least. But once again this part, less is more. Don't go too crazy. We're nearly done with that. Definitely. I'm going to put a little bit more blush here. Just a little bit. A little bit more of a pink cheek baby. It's as simple as that. That's it. That's our baby's face coloured. So now let's go off and finish the rest of the baby. Okay, let's finish off this sleeping cherub pixie baby. So first thing we want to do is get head off board. I like to squish the paste as far underneath as I can without damaging the actual shape. And then just cut it off. <laughs> Chop his head off. Pretty much like that. Now, if this was a bit more um, dry, I'd be able to shape this better without worrying about damaging the front. But because it's not, I'm just gonna have to be really careful and shape that out. All right, I'll leave him like that. And I'm gonna save this paste. I'm gonna use that for body and ears. Pop this aside. First thing we want to do is to make a body shape. Now it doesn't have to be like a body, just a body shape. So to do that, this is all pretty much trial and error for size. You just want to get a size relative to baby. 
I'm just rolling some more modeling paste into a teardrop shape and popping it up next to baby. That's a little bit too small. Baby will look a little bit funny. A little bit more. Roll it into a teardrop and much happier with us. Okay, baby's head aside. So now we have body and I'm now going to cover that body in a little blankie. So I've got some Saracino modeling paste that I've tinted a green color, a half and half mixture again. And I'm just going to roll this out. Now where's my dusting pouch? Because this is bound to get sticky. So of course we need it big enough to cover our baby. Once again, this doesn't have to be perfect because it has a second cover also. So just cutting it into a little bit of a rectangle, just neatening things up a little. Let's see how we go. Body in. I'm going to pop that little bit up here. And wrap the baby. Okie doke. Baby is pretty much wrapped. Now, of course, because we're doing a different covering, you could do the whole body in just this color. That's fine. This is just how I've chosen to do it. Just gonna pinch those bits off the end. And that's pretty much a baby's body. We're good, we're good, all right. I'm going to move that aside. Now we're going to put a little hat on our baby that's going to match the blanket. So once again, same colour paste. Roll it into a ball. Make things unsticky. check the size. That looks pretty good I think. So I've just wrapped that around baby's head like that and I'm just going to fold it underneath. Remember we're not going to see any of this underneath section so folding it underneath being very careful not to squash my face because it's still fresh. And there we go. Okay. Baby's little hat. To finish off little hat, I'm just going to put a little band around the edge with my Dresden tool. So I'm just going to mark a line. best I can all the way around. It's all in the detail folks, all in the detail. And then just little lines up into it for a band. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do with little hat is use a wire tool and I'm just going to give it a little bit of texture. Once again, being careful not to completely ruin my fresh baby face. Cute little bonnet on the baby. One thing that's going to define this guy as a pixie is the ears. And of course I've waited until now because we have to put the hat on. So to make the little ears, once again, the same colored modeling paste. 
and I'm going to roll two very similar sized long teardrops, just like that. Now this is where it gets tricky because the smaller pieces are super sticky. That's pretty good. I'm going to give them a quick dust because they are going to be sticky and then I'm going to dust my Dresden tool and then I'm just going to press my Dresden into the center of the ears, just like that. With a little bit of water, we're just going to attach those itty bitty ears. Put one there. Oh, fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. One there. It's probably a tad too high, but I'm going to leave it for now. I probably put that lower. And another one there. As you can see, they're not even. I'm actually just really conscious that I'm going to hurt the shape of my baby. Okay, let's leave it at that because another one of these things I could fuss with forever. Baby's ready to go together. So I'm going to roll the end of this out. So baby's got somewhere to rest his little head. And that's about perfect. So we're gonna pop that aside for a minute and we're gonna go and have a look at this little guy that we made earlier. This is where baby's going to sleep. How's it going to behave? Yep, out she pops. And we have a little chocolate nest. Oh, how cute. Now, do you remember in the last episode how I made the moss for our tree? Well, we're going to put some moss in here for baby to sleep on because it's nice and soft. So into the little ca cage, into the little um, oh, nest, <laughs> oh dear, goes some moss. I'm just going to press that around. We may add a bit more later, I shall see. And then baby, we have to do baby placement. So body, body of baby, head of baby. Well, that fitting quite perfectly. And then, this is me being extra, as you do. Put a little blankie on baby. So once again, just the same colored green modeling paste. I'm going to roll that into a rectangle. Cutting around the excess to make sure it looks neater. Let me just double check that we have plenty, plenty for baby. Might even cut a little bit more off to be honest. That should do it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my little brush and give that a little bit of fabric texture. Oops, not like that. Holding up that end to make it neater. And then I'm just going to wrap that around baby. Sort of just drape it. And before you get too carried away, there's one last thing to add. And that is a little wings. So they can go in now. One in the side of his body here, the other one in the other side right here. If it'll go in, I might just have to give it a little bit of help. There we go. 
so very, very cute, our sleeping pixie. And that is it. That's our little sleeping pixie in a bird's nest hopper done. Now it's time to put everything together. So we will do that straight after this break. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford, and on this module, I'm going to take you through all the different stages to create a beautiful, traditional, royal iced cake. So coming up first, I'm going to show you how to marzipan a traditional fruit cake. Once we've got the cake lovely marzipan and it's set overnight, it's then down to the royal ice and how to get this beautiful, smooth and sharp finish. Once the cake's set, it's then onto the piping bag and piping these beautiful little borders around the side of the cake, a little scroll around the side and then of course then the message on top. So the last section of this module is how to do a traditional royalized run out. So you can see around the cake we've got these beautiful love hearts, we're going to make this really nice big daisy and of course this beautiful 3D butterfly. So come on, grab your piping bag, let's get started. Okay ladies and gents, let's take this home. So we have to make the stand for our little butterfly canopy lamp thing that we made before. So to make that, I've got some wire here. I can't remember the gauge. It's thick. And I've bent it into this shape because I need this to sit like that. Okay, so it's just like hooked that way and then hooked upwards. And that's what we want. But we want the majority of that to be hidden. Okay, now we want to make it look a little bit like a branch. So I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is bring our cake in because I need to know how tall I want this to be. So our finished cake is here and I certainly don't want it to be any taller than that. So I'm going to just cut the wire if it will behave, yes, because I need room to actually sink it in. I still think that might be a bit high for my liking. Oh no, baby's got to fit under there yet, so that's probably okay. Now what I'm going to do is to add some more wire just to thicken it up and make it look a bit more tree branchy. So I'm going to cut this also. Oops, and it flies across the room. And I may put another one in as well, which I could have used the end of that other piece had it not flown across the room, but it has. And... Hey, it stayed because I did it against myself. Okay, so we've got a few pieces here. Then I've got, I've got some needle nose pliers and I'm just going to hold the end and it's not going to behave that's all right i can just start with these ones start with these ones i said and twist them together there we go now i'll put this one in i'll start it off myself there we go twist that in just like that Okay, now what I'm doing is taking some brown florist tape and of course we have to pull that to activate the glue. I'm going to start on the bottom and just start wrapping that up. So what I want to do on the way up is to actually stop in spots and make it a little bit extra and lumpy. So I'll twist my floral tape and then cover just to make a few lumps and bumps along the way.
there we go. Just going to leave that little bit exposed so that we've got something to put our um, little butterfly wings on. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think, yes. We can also manipulate those wires, of course. Now let's pop our baby on. So to put our baby on, I want the baby on a little bit of an angle. So I'm just going to use some flour paste, sugar paste, modeling paste, third time lucky. And excuse me a second while I decide on placement. Because I want it tilted up a bit so we can see baby. And it'll be around about there. So I've got placement and maybe not quite that tilted there we go hope you can see that i've sort of pushed that into the paste so it's really not going to go anywhere and now around that paste i'm going to pop some moss And I'll just push it all under. There we go. Lovely. Now, because once again, I'm not organized, I'm gonna have to just pop over and grab a straw. So I'm gonna grab a little bubble tea straw and I'm going to pop it into the back around about where I want my little lantern to be. So probably around there. Yep. Pop it down before I reach the bottom. I'm just going to cut this. Now this is serving as keeping wires out of the cake so it's food safe. So I push that the rest of the way in. Then, I'm gonna get a little bit more modeling paste. I said it right this time, yay! And pop that into that straw. So that when I pop the wire in, it can be secure. There we go. And the last thing I want to do is, actually I'll check this first, how I want this, I want it around that way, right? So I want it bent over a bit more, that's better, okay, around about there. So. I'm gonna leave this in and push that in a little further so it's a bit lower. Cover that up with my moss also so we don't see that. And then what I have is one of these funky little balloon lights that, you know, you just turn on and off. And I need a thinner piece of wire, which once again, I haven't gotten. <laughs> They're organized. And I'm going to loop that wire around. my balloon light, like so, and then attach my balloon light right about there. Trying to avoid the switch, because you need to switch it on, right? And there we go, balloon light is on. Let's make sure that we're covering Yes, we are. And this guy basically just sits on top with that wire there. So these can go away. And the very final thing that I want to do, besides clean up this giant mess, is I still have a few little bits and pieces here that I'm going to, because this isn't getting eaten, I'm just gonna stick these in. But once again, I would definitely food safe these, probably in the same way that I did for the little light here. So. Once again, I'm popping it in my direction, so apologies. 
and I'll pop these in just to finish it off. Okay, so now you're gonna have to excuse my mess. But there she is. And don't forget the piece de resistance. <laughs> They're all gonna have to go off. Oh, you can just see it. Can we see? You probably still can't on film, but it looks very, very sweet. I'll see if I close the curtain, it helps. Ah, oh, we have a glow. Can you see that? Now you definitely can't see. <laughs> but I promise you it's glowing and it looks adorable. And that, my dear friends, is how you make this gorgeous little pixie topper with a, I promise, glowing little butterfly lamp above his head to put on top of the gorgeous enchanted forest tree stump cake that we made in last episode. Well guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you learned heaps and heaps and um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.